Equestrian sport is a sport like no other. The mental demands on athletes, both horse and rider, result in a unique bond. In 1990, the sport's governing body, the Fédération Équestre Internationale, took the bold and inspired decision to hold one event, bringing together a myriad of global competitions into one world championship. Since then, it has grown in reputation to outstrip all others, even the Olympics. Riders and horses alike must navigate the most rigorous selection process and test their focus and dedication just to qualify. And it's held only once every four years. Some will make it, many won't. But in equestrian sport, there is no greater test, no better competition, no prize more prestigious than that of the Alltech FEI World Equestrian Games. Held in 2014 in Normandy, France. World Equestrian Games is our Olympics, so it's the highest level that we're going to be involved in. There is a World Championship every two years, but the Equestrian Games involves all the other disciplines, so it just feels a bigger, more important deal. I think it's going to be a really good show. It's something I've never done before, actually. I've been lucky. I've competed in two Olympic Games, two or three European Championships, and. The last World Games, unfortunately, my horse was injured not long before, so I'm really keen to try and add that to the list of achievements. No nation is any more outstanding than another one. There are a lot of them up there, so it'll be a really exciting World Equestrian Games. And I think it's very exciting for the future of the sport that it's still progressing. Not from a horse background at all, and just got in slowly when I was seven, eight years old, and I guess I loved it from the beginning. My mum rode for a hobby. Uh, she had a horse and did some local shows and rode at weekends and uh, had a Shetland pony in the beginning. I more remember the beginning of the days where I started in, like, pony club and we did, like, a yellow submarine fancy dress, and I remember going off and walking the course for a cross-country and falling off and it was pouring with rain and I was upside down in some ditch and I mean really I'd perhaps did everything I don't actually know if my parents were supportive but they're trying to put me off because <laughs> everything went pretty wrong from the beginning and it was a bit of a joke that if I finished the course they would uh, actually pay me if I finished the course before I'd even left school I was doing the bare minimum at school to pass all the exams but just thinking about where I was going to the next competition or where I wanted to be and and on the last day of school, I went with my bag packed. I did my last exam and, and I left home straight away to start working with, with the horses that afternoon. I don't really know how I ended up where I am right now. I fell off more than I stayed on when I started. I had a traditional pony club upbringing. I've got an older brother and we had very similar sized ponies as we went through pony club, which obviously you then grow out of. So my father tied them together and started driving them. And then as the years went by, I became his groom and then eventually took over the reins and never looked back. It was just an insatiable desire to be out working with the ponies constantly trying to improve them, learn something new, tie more together, try different varieties, different combinations, and couldn't, couldn't wait to get to the next competition. And then by 15, I was runner-up in the national championships. From sort of coming onto the scene, as it were, as a young driver, I then had to bide my time and do my apprenticeship while I did competition after competition after competition where things went wrong. You know, they were very nearly very good. And I didn't really get my act together until 1995 when I went to Holland for the first European Pony Championships and won there. Much to a lot of people's surprise, I have to say. The whole 
scene, if you like, was still developing. The rule book was only written in 1969. When I started, we were largely self-taught. There was nowhere particular to go to get specific carriage driving lessons. And the equipment, looking back, you know, 20 years on, was pretty basic compared to what we're using now. So wheels genuinely fell off the carriage, you know, and you got stuck in hazards that were maybe a little bit flimsy or maybe just a bit impossible to get round. From the moment I started driving the horse team, I wanted to be at the World Equestrian Games. I'd sacrificed so much. I'd, when I started the horse team, I went and lived in a shed in the New Forest so that I could rent a suitable facility to train the horses at. Um, I'd, I'd put a lot of things on hold. I'd put my career on hold. I'd gone self-employed to train in America and I had to do better, so no, at that stage, it didn't occur to me to stop. I loved ponies. They were always in my life. One of the biggest loves of her life was a little pony called Primrose, who I bought, I didn't know very much then, and she had a horrid little swishy tail, and she was a little bit of a madam, but they had a wonderful partnership. She was at four, we did a pairs competition together in the tiny, tiny little hunter trials. Anyway, I, as a doting mother on my hunter, um, I ran out at one fence and she said, Mummy, we could have won. And we didn't because you ran out, which I did. <laughs> I did A-levels and was supposed to go to university, but I knew I was never going to go. It's not, I don't think, any different to any other top class sport you have to work hard it is your life so I think the luck was that I was talented enough that I could pursue that dream there was moments a few years ago where I was struggling a little bit with sponsors and getting good horses to ride maybe I thought that it wasn't going to work out and I should have a change of direction but I was lucky I had a good horse come into the stable a few months later and it changed everything for me and we haven't really looked back since. That was before the, the um, Olympic Games in Hong Kong. I love representing the country. I think it's fantastic. And uh, obviously having done it, done it before with, with the ponies, this is every inch as exciting as that. I think it's a very exciting sport to watch. You know, it requires a lot of work and skill and I just, would hope that we can somehow manage to, to get that across to the public. We're a team that want to win for sure. We'll do everything we can. And sometimes there's negative points to that. Sometimes it's be good to take a second or a third and be more consistent or whatever. I've always been the type of rider that will be aggressive, will try and win a class, but at the same time we can lose a class because we take risks. But I think that's sport at the end of the day. And if you're happy to settle for second, third or fourth and over a period of time, there's obviously times when you know you have to hold back and, and wait for another day, but sport's about winning and they only remember who won. And we will be trying as hard as anybody to, to be the one that gets ahead. Having represented my country before, there is nothing like watching the Union flag go up the pole and standing on top of the podium. Um, I don't think I will get anything in my life to replicate that. Someone asked me once, would you ride if you didn't, do, if you didn't compete, if there were no competitions? I don't know, I don't think I would. <laughs>